Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Desk, the podcast all about my time in the studio as a student. As ever, I'm John Wells, and today I want to talk about rappers and my experience with working with them. Because of, you know, lockdown and COVID and all that kind of stuff, the recording sessions that we've had have mainly been solo musicians. So, just so we can social distance and keep everyone safe, you know? Which is a good thing, because safety is really important and all that, but at the same time, it means we can't do any group sessions, and we can't have bands coming in, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know, I'd rather be safe than, you know, have bands just loading into the studio constantly. So, for the past month or so, most of the recording sessions have been solo vocalists, more specifically, rappers. And I guess it's because there must be a pretty big scene when it comes to rappers in Newcastle. Now, hip-hop, rap, R&B, that kind of music, it's not my favourite type of music, and I would much rather record like a rock band or an indie group or something like that. But when you're in the studio, you've got to record and mix whoever comes in, regardless of the genre. And you also need to know how to record these different styles of music. Because if you focus on one genre and do it well, that's cool and all. But what happens when you need to record a different genre? Um, It becomes a lot harder for you, basically. Uh, An example would be like, if I focused all my attention on rock music, that'd be cool. I'd be able to do rock music really well. But as soon as a rapper comes in, it'd be a lot harder. Now, luckily, recording techniques and recording them pretty universal for most styles of music, so you're pretty much all right there. Uh, I think it's more of a challenge when you get to mixing the different styles of music, so like mixing a rock piece of music versus mixing a rap piece of music is very different, and both of them are very different to like a classical piece of music, but I think I'll talk about mixing another day. So like I said earlier, most of the sessions I've run have been rappers. There has been others like a country singer, there was this Jamaican style woman singer, and a couple of like karaoke singers, but that's like a completely different part of the company, but still uses the studio. Anyway, rappers are very popular in the studio, and recording them tends to work the same way really. But what we usually do is, before they come in, we have to set up the microphone and pop shields in the conservatory style booth. And the reason I say a conservatory, because it looks like a conservatory built into a live room, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Now, the microphone we use is usually a Shure SM7B, because it has that like built in pop shield, which is really good for vocalists with a lot of like plosives and words like rappers for example and it just works a lot better than our Brawna Phantom and then we also put like a second pop shield up but this one's made of metal I mean it's not really useful in terms of stopping any plosive sounds I think it's just more in case any spit goes onto the microphone just like a safety hazard because of lockdown and all that And then after that, we just put everything through the preamps in the studio. I think we usually use the Neve too, which is pretty cool. Anyway, we get that patched in, as well as a cool looking talkback box. I can never remember the proper name of it. It might be called the talkback box, but it's basically a box which allows the musician to create their own headphone mix. And it's patched into the desk via an ethernet cable. The reason we use the ethernet cable is because it can carry 8 channels of audio. Due to the way that the cable, the ethernet cable has like 8 smaller cables inside, so each little cable or inner cable can carry 8 channels of audio, well can carry carry a channel of audio and there's 8 of them so that's why we can get 8. And I think it works really well because it's very helpful for talk back and levels and all that because you don't have to worry about setting the musician's headphone mix either and you can focus on making sure nothing clips in Cubase or the desk and you can just focus on sound checks on your end rather than focusing on your end and their end. Another thing that a lot of rappers want is auto-tune on their vocals and to hear it when they're singing. 
Now, until I got into the studio, I'd never really touched auto-tune. Maybe a little bit of Melodyne, which is like a pitch correction tool, but not like a flow blow, not like a flow, not like a full blown auto tune plugin, because I've made need to until now. And what I found interesting about auto tune is, well, a couple of things actually. First of all, the fact that it uses an effect rather than a pitch correction, which is fascinating in of itself. But also the fact that most rappers want the settings the same. I mean, they don't realise it's the same, at least I don't think they do, but they all want the settings really, really fast. And when everything's really fast, it sounds like the rapper T-Pain. Now, he's a famous rapper who uses autotune. I think he was the first rapper to use autotune. And his voice and his style of music basically has like this robotic autotune sound. I know it's not like the best description, but it's like it's a very noticeable effect and it's non-natural, which you can easily tell when it's used. But that's what rappers like, and I think it's kind of evolved into what rappers want to sound like, which is pretty cool. So yeah, most rappers want to hear Austude in their headphones, so you usually have to add that to the effect chain or the plugin chain. Along with a high pass filter and usually some form of compressor. Now, Another effect based thing that I've noticed with rappers is that very few of them want reverb or delay. And I guess that makes sense, because when you're rapping it's fast paced lyrics and you very few and there's very few breaks or pauses in between phrases. Delay would make the vocals just sound muddy and mess up the flow of the lyrics probably. And reverb gives a sense of space, that's what it's designed to do. But rappers probably don't want that, they want close, tight vocals, so it's not the best effect to use. I mean, don't get me wrong, some of them want it, but it's just very subtly, as far as I've noticed. Now, going back to what I said earlier about recording different genres, I think the idea of not wanting reverb and delay is an example of that. Because if a pop singer came in, they would most likely want a bit of reverb compared to the rapper. So I think it's cool to see like the different ways, different styles and different genres use effects and workflows in a session as well. And speaking of sessions, one thing that I have forgotten to mention is that, you know, pop singers, country singers compared to rappers record very differently. Like rappers usually record phrase by phrase. And the reason for this, I think is different for different people. For some, I think they've just run out of breath and they need to record in smaller takes. And I think others just keep messing up their takes because they can't get, because they can't think of the next line fast enough and they keep tripping up over themselves. So I think they need to just record it either in eight bars, four bars, and sometimes literally just a phrase by phrase situation. And they'll keep recording it until they get it right and then we move on to the next bit which sometimes can take like 20 takes 30 takes now this is something i didn't really think about before the studio like the actual time and effort it takes and retries it takes for just one element of a song but i mean it works out in the end it just takes a long time to come together after the rapper has left so, get ready to learn how to crossfade and split audio like a pro, because you'll be doing it a lot, especially if you're recording a rapper, because they will do it line by line usually. I mean, saying that, we did have a rapper the other day that came in, and he was just spitting out lyrics in like 16 bars, and he did like all of it in one take, it was like pretty impressive to be fair. So yeah, that's just some of my experience recording rappers in the studio. If you have any more questions, comment down below or ask away on Facebook at Wellsy Media. Link will be in the description below. But anyway, thanks for listening for today's episode. Hope you liked it and I'll see you on the next one.